Hi there, and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me, Julian, and today we want to talk about how to integrate customer I.O. Before we get started, as always, these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com, and I'm starting a live workshop series that you can participate on online and learn something new about Google Tag Manager, but also ask me questions live on air. If you want to check that out, head over to gtmtraining.com slash workshops. Now, one of the great use cases of Google Tag Manager is that you can send data into different tools, not only Google Analytics or AdWords. And one of the great examples I found is to send data actually into your email tool to send out automized campaigns to your users. Now, why do we use a software like Custom.io? Well, MailChimp and Active Campaign, Infusionsoft and so on are also automation tools. You can bend them to be an automation tool. But the cool thing about tools like Custom.io is actually that they have a JavaScript API so they can be used in conjunction with Google Tag Manager. And we can use Google Tag Manager to send in data into these tools. Now, Custom.io is not the only one out there. Popular ones are Clavio or Vero and also Drip, which have JavaScript APIs available and you can send in data with Google Tag Manager. But today we want to talk about Custom.io and how to accomplish this with Custom.io. Now on our demo site, we have an online shop and what we want to try to accomplish is to identify the user that comes to this page. We could do this by asking the user to enter his email, either through a pop-up that comes up or a newsletter sign-up box that we could put into the footer or we could ask the user to log in. But I have a contact page here, which we will use to transfer the name and the email address to Custom.io. And that way we have identified the user to the system. And afterwards we can track whatever he does on the page for example, he goes to a product page and clicks the Add to Cart button. And we can re register that in Custom.io. And if the user, for example, doesn't buy the product in the end, you can send out an email saying, hey, are you still interested in this product? Hugely valuable for automized campaigns. So let's get started implementing this example. First of all, we head over to our dashboard in Customer.io and we have the integrations part here where we find the JavaScript codes that we need to implement in order to make this all work. First of all, we have a general JavaScript snippet that we need to deploy on all our web pages. So let's copy that, head over to Google Tag Manager and under tags, we can go to new name our tag appropriately. As the tag template, we'll choose custom HTML tag and just implement our custom HTML tag. Now, if this doesn't look like this in your window, that's because I have a plugin installed, the GTM editor by 55, which you can download in a Chrome extension store. All right, let's continue here and choose as the firing rule our all pages trigger. Let's create this and go to the preview and debug mode and see if this works correctly. You see the debug console come up and our customer IO general tag is firing. So this step is done. Let's go on and look at the second step where we need to identify the user. This is a script that we need to customize. So let's copy this first. Go over to Google Tag Manager and implement a new tag. This will be our custom IO tag again. This time we want to identify user and we'll fire this on a form submit. As a product 
we use the custom HTML tag and implement our script. And this we need to customize. Now, as I already said, we want to identify the user on this contact page. How do we get these form fields actually transferred over to Google Tag Manager? I won't go through this in detail. I described this in another video about how to track form fields. So if you want to check that out, you will have that available on YouTube. I'll link that up below. But let's just see what happens when I put in a name and an email. Let's send this off and I'll press the escape key right after I press the send button here so we don't get redirected on to the next page. All right, we have a GTM form submit and all we want to do right now is look into the variables and we can look down here and we have here the form email and the form name and those are the fields that I pulled out of the forms and how this is done is described in the form field video. And we can use these variables to pass them on to our custom IO tag. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager. And as the ID, we need to have a unique identifier. I'll just choose the email that we have available in our variables because this is also unique. Let's do this. We need the two swirly brackets here and we just input our variable, which is form email. You can just copy this and put this one in the next field too, which is the email field. Then we have a timestamp, which will be filled automatically, so we don't really need this. And we can input the first name and other additional and optional attributes of this user. For now, I'll just go with the name. Let's delete this last line here. And instead of John, we want to have our variable filled with the form name. All right. Don't forget the swirly brackets. Otherwise, Google Tag Manager won't know that this is a variable. And we're all done. Let's click on continue. And we need to choose our trigger. Now, we already have a trigger from the old video that you can look up, which is the contact form submit trigger. Let's save this and create our tag. Refresh our preview and debug mode. And we have a error here. Let's see what's the error. Line 27. Line 9, 27. And it's because we have a comma here, although the object is finished. So we need to get rid of this comma. And this should solve the problem, hopefully. Let's see. Save this tag again. Refresh. Yep, this should do it. Let's go back to our page, reload our page. Fill in our data again. And this time I will just let it run through. We should have a new tag firing and this should actually show up in our dashboard of custom IO. So let's go to the activity stream here on the logs. And we see a new user has just been identified. Once we click on it, we see that the ID is Charles at Gmail, the emails Charles at gmail.com and the name is Charles. So all the data that we was registered in custom IO correctly. Now the user is subscribed in your system. Of course, you should always make him aware of 
that he is subscribing actually to your service. So you should have some kind of notice within your form. I don't have that here right now, but it's best practice to actually have such a field, especially if you're sending out any kind of promotional emails. But now that the user is identified in the system, the custom IO tracking script actually places a cookie on this user's browser and we are able to track him through the application. Unfortunately, as it is in Google Analytics, we cannot pick up any kind of event data. And this is what we are gonna build in with Google Tag Manager to make it even more useful. What we wanna track is one of these items if somebody clicks on the Add to Cart button. And we actually know how to do this because I described it in another video under the Google Tag Manager button click tracking. You can look that up and we'll just not use this this time to send an event into Google Analytics, but rather send our event tag into Custom.io. Now let's go over to Custom.io and actually look how this integration looks like. So we have the integration button here. And as a last point, we can send in any track data, like watch the video or purchase an item through this tracking script. So let's copy this, go over to Google Tag Manager, add a new tag. And this will be a custom IO. event track for our add to cart button. Let's go with customer, custom HTML, implement our tag here, and we'll get rid of this first line. And we want to call this event, add it to cart. Now what we can do additionally is send in attributes with this event. So add it to cart. It would make sense to send in other product information. What do we have available in our data layer? Let's look into our DOM ready and the variables. And here we have all the variables that are available. For example, the price. Um, let's go with the product ID here. Let's input the product ID, which will be a number. So let's go over here and implement our product ID. And we want to have that filled dynamically with a variable. So we'll go with the two swirly brackets here and input our data layer name, which is the product ID. All right, that should do it. Let's continue here and choose our trigger, which we have already created in our video about button click tracking. So if you wanna check that out, head over to this video. And we have it right here, add to cart click. Let's save this and create this tag. Now refresh our debug mode and refresh our demo site. And now let's click on this add to cart button. The add to cart happened. And we should be able to see this in our custom IO real time log. Let's go here to activity. And we saw that this user just fired an event called add to cart. So this works correctly. Now, what can you do with this? You could actually build a triggered campaign to send an email to charles at gmail.com if the user clicked a given product or hasn't bought this product in the end. So if you build in another event, for example, purchase product and he didn't take the purchase action, you could send him a reminder email that he should look again at this product with the ID, let's click on this event, with the product ID 70. Now obviously this is a little bit sparse on the information that you have available, 
but you could obviously also transfer the product name, the product price, the product image to display in your emails. And that makes up a great automatic email. To spin this to the end, you will obviously publish this as a version to all your users. So all of them would be identified once they go through the form and would be tracked once they click on an add to cart button. So this is a fairly easy example on how to implement custom IO. The possibilities here are really endless in terms of tracking what interactions you would like to send an email out to your users. And it's a really great possibility to do this with Google Tag Manager and the in combination with the auto event tracking. For example, if they click on something, you want to send out an email automatically to the user and you can easily build this in with the help of Google Tag Manager. And that's already it with this week's video of GTM training. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. And if you want to participate in our live workshops at gtmtraining.com slash workshops. I'm Julian, till next time. So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager. And when somebody's, but now let's get started talking about bounce rate. So the bounce rate is often seen as this metric to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around or leave the page? There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that is defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So bounce in.